Hey everyone, this is Kim from the chesswebsite.com and today we're in round nine and potentially our last round of the 2016 Singfield Cup. I say potentially last because we could have a tournament going on tomorrow. Wesley So currently sitting up top of the leaderboard by half a point, leading three competitors tied for second right behind him with Vishyanan, Topolov, and Levon Aronian. So if either of those three players win, Wesley So, even with the tie, would go into a tournament tomorrow. Now, if they all draw, then Wesley So with a draw would be the champion. So in today's match, we're going to be watching MVL playing the white pieces and black being played by Wesley So. Since he is in the lead, always going to be interesting to see how he plays out his final match in the tournament. Starts out with pawn to e4 from MVL. So continues pawn e5, knight f3, knight c6, and then bishop to b5, getting into the right Lopez, and then knight to f6, getting into the Berlin defense. MVL castles on the king side. Knight takes down on e4, pawn to d4, and we've been covering the Berlin defense more and more frequently, and this variation that you're looking at right here seems to be pretty common. Now the knight's going to come back to d6, the bishop takes, pawn takes, and then pawn takes on d or e5, forcing the knight to move, and the queens come off the board. This particular variation after that pawn to d4 is probably one of the more drawlish lines, uh, and it's interesting to note how Wesley so feels about this. He does want at least a draw to make sure that if there is a tie with Vishyanan, Toblov, or Aronian, that he can at least get a share potentially into the playoffs tomorrow. Uh, but you know that deep down he's playing better chess than MVL, and he'd really like to be playing for the victory here. Pawn here to h3, and then king to e8, uh, recognizing that rook over here to d1, controlling this d-file, just wants to go ahead and get it out of the way right now. Knight to c3, just continuing to develop, and then pawn to h5. So since he can't castle, uh, since he's moved his king, decides to go ahead and start pushing over here on the king side, uh, where his opponent's king is. Usually you see this if you've either A, castled on the queen side, you just start to push all your pawns on your opponent's king side if he's castled there, uh, or if you, in this position, once he's already moved his king, usually after the queens have swapped off the board, then you start to push your pawns the same. Bishop to g5, Bishop e6, both sides continuing development on board. A rook here to d1, just controlling this open file. A bishop here to e7, pawn here to b3. Uh, just solidifying the pawn chain a little bit, also allowing this knight to move if he wants to. Right now it is guarding this pawn here on a2. Pawn here to a5, so hey, let's go ahead and start to attack on the queen side of the board as well. Rook to d3, just preparing for the rook over here to d1 if he wants to, uh, and rook over here to d8. So we do see an exchange on board, uh, and then the rook comes back here to d1, controlling this open file. So uh, MVL right now has a slight advantage, uh, just because he's controlling a little bit more of the center of the board. His central pawns pushed a little bit more forward, uh, and he is the only one with a forward central pawn right now. But all in all, uh, Wesley So still has a pretty good board, uh, but he doesn't have you know one of his rooks. He doesn't have his queen on board. So it's going to be difficult to come up with a very strong attack uh, for Wesley So. So takes on g5. The knight takes on g5 and then king to e7. Activating the king. The queen's off the board. The bishops are off the board. It's safe to now get the king involved. Wesley So is going to need all the material that he can involved into the attack if he wants to have any sort of chance at actually winning this game. Knight here to e2. Uh, now that the pawn up here on b3 doesn't have to worry about protecting the pawn on a2 with his knight. So he can freely bring his knight here to a2. And then later he can get involved into the game. Knight here to d4. Knight here to f4 he does have some options on board knight h4 uh, and then pawn up to g3 forcing the knight back uh, the knight was really planning on coming back anyway g6 attacking the pawn here on e5 knight takes uh, and then pawn takes right here and then pawn up here to f4 solidifying this pawn chain protecting the pawn here on e5 so now brings his rook over here to f8, the one semi-open file that he can control. You always want to have your rooks controlling open files or semi-open files. Uh, semi-open file meaning you don't have your pawn there. Uh, 
completely open file would be no pawns at all. So the rook comes over here to f8, can't control the d file since right now MVL is controlling the d file. So uh, rook up here to d4, uh, wants to make sure that he can control this fourth rank. Uh, anytime your opponent is going to be pushing pawns over here, uh, this is a very strong square uh, that he can really control this entire rank here. Pawn near to c5 is going to force it to move. Rook comes here to e4 so it can still hold on to that material. And immediately once it comes off this d file, Wesley so brings his rook over here to d8. King to f2, just getting his king involved into the action. Uh, and then rook down here to d1. I probably would have played rook down here to d2. I usually like to get my rooks to the second rank of my opponent if I'm playing black. If I'm white, I like to bring it up here to the seventh rank. Uh, but all in all, decide to go ahead and bring it down here to d1 so you can get behind in enemy lines with rook to a1. Rook over here to h7 does have some options right there. Either way, rook here to d1 or d2, it's going to be somewhat of a nuisance for MVL to deal with. Pawn here to g4, looking to break things up a little bit. Pawn captures on g4. And then pawn to b5. So Wesley So looking to start attacking over here on on the, the queen side of the board. Pawn up to f5, so MVL says, hey, if you're going to attack on the queen side, I'll attack on the king side. Uh, we do see knight to h4, protecting this square here on f5 after any potential exchange. Uh, and same thing from white, knight over here to g3, protecting that same square. Rook a1 decides to go ahead and start an attack on the queen side. Pawn up here to a4. And then rook to a2. Just improving position a little bit, attacking both the pawn on a4 and this pawn here on c2. MVL takes on b5. Rook over here takes on c2. There are double pawns, so just keep that in mind. But if we look at the pawns, we do see five pawns to five pawns. And there's double pawns here on the c file, double pawns here on the b file. So all in all, pretty even on board. Now the rooks come off the board, uh, fairly drawish in game. Someone would definitely have to make a mistake to not have this be into a draw. Pawn down here to c4, pawn takes, uh, and then the pawn pushes over here to a4. So black giving up material, recognizing that his really only shot on board is for MVL to make a huge mistake or to push this pawn. And that's what he starts to do, pawn to a4. Uh, and essentially white has to start bringing his king over here to protect that. King here to d3, knight to f3, pawn up to f6. Just trying to have some sort of attack over here on the king side to keep black's attention away from this pawn over here on a4. King to f7, we do see an exchange on board. Uh, and the knight to e5, check. Uh, king over here to c3 is going to be that way anyway. Pawn to a3. Pawn up here to c5. Uh, does not want to go ahead and bring his king over there right now uh, because then he could just lose one of his pawns uh, right away. Uh, if we were to see king to b3, we could just see the knight take. The king can't just take right here because then the pawn is just going to keep pushing forward on board. So he does have the in-between move of pawn to c5. Uh, now Wesley So plays knight to d3, a move that a lot of amateurs may fall for. Take the knight here. That's Clearly going to be bad. Pawn to a2. Going to be getting ready to promote. Uh, so can't do that. Probably a little bit better too than the, the king taking on g7. Uh, because now the king just comes over here to b3. There's no real way to hold on to this material. And then there's three pawns to two pawns. Uh, and white probably has a, a pretty good position on board. Instead he decides to play correctly. Knight down here to d3. Uh, now after king to b3. The knight can take on c5 check. And after the king takes, uh, we do have three pawns to two pawns. But it's a little bit better now the king can take on g7. And things are going to be okay for both sides of the board. It's going to be pretty jollish. King here to b4. Knight down here to d3 check. King c4. Knight here to e5 check. King moves. Uh, and then king over here to uh, h6. So continues after knight to e2, uh, he plays pawn here to c6, and that's probably better than taking on g4, because uh, then we have king to c6. His knight's just not involved into the action, and he really just has to worry about this pawn pushing forward. You can't checkmate your opponent with just a knight, so as long as he doesn't allow his opponent to push this pawn, he's going to be fine. So instead decides, okay, I'm not going to take this pawn, 
Uh, it's kind of a bogey over there. I'm going to play pawn here to c6. Try to get this pawn off the board. We do see the pawn take. Uh, and then after the knight takes here, uh, the king takes. Then all of a sudden we can see this pawn is not going to be able to be protected by this knight. Uh, and so after the pawn takes, or the king takes the pawn, the king takes the pawn, we do see a draw on board. So uh, Wesley So gets the draw. Fortunately for him, Vishyanhan Toplov and Levon Aronian all tied their games. Wesley So did have to wait to actually make sure that uh, that would happen since his game ended a little bit early. Uh, but congratulations to Wesley So. Played a really, really good tournament. Uh, and at the end of the day, uh, you don't always see the craziest of the matches. There's no way for him to put himself in any crazy positions uh, going into the last round where he does need a, a draw for sure, uh, knowing that one of his opponents will at least get a draw. But congratulations to him. Really good tournament. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Sinkville Cup, always one of the best tournaments of the year, especially being part of the Grand Tour. So uh, be on the lookout. In a few months, we do have the World Championships in November. They will be held in New York uh, with Sergei Kardiakin and Magnus Carlsen, the defending champions. So that's going to be an exciting match. Uh, and then in December, we have the last leg uh, of the Grand Tour, which is the London Classic. So be on the lookout for that as well. Uh, but until next time, thanks again for watching.